Attorney General William Barr testifying before the Senate Judiciary Committee today, and he was forced to answer questions about his handling of the Mueller report. Connecticut Senator Richard Blumenthal, one of the lawmakers, grilling him, and he'll join us tonight to discuss. Then, a former federal prosecutor will weigh in on where we go from here, that in the wake of Barr's testimony. And later, our legal panel joins us to take a look at a bunch of big stories making big news. Landmark case of opioids, the college admission scandal, and more. Evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. Thank you for joining us on this busy Wednesday. I am Richard French. Now, for the first time since the public release of the Mueller report, Attorney General William Barr took questions under oath on Capitol Hill. The theme of the day? Well, what you'd expect. Republicans on the Senate Judiciary Committee working to not only protect Barr and the president and even poking holes at the Democratic talking points, trying to deflect issues beyond collusion and obstruction. And yes, believe it or not, like in a time warp, Hillary Clinton's name came up multiple times. But Democrats, they had some tough questions, and they struggled to get answers from them when it came to Mr. Barr. Joining us now for a recap and some of the sound that really stood out today, our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. I think, at least for myself and I think for many others, a frustrating day because there was verbal jujitsu going on for avoidance, and then when the mood fit, it seemed, He'd extrapolate or opine about other things. We didn't remotely get the transparency we were hoping for. A frustrating day for the people who do this for a living, Rich, particularly annoying for people who watch a little more casually from home. We'll get to today's testimony in a moment, but there is breaking news tonight. Multiple outlets reporting that Attorney General William Barr will not testify before the House Judiciary Committee tomorrow. He is reportedly upset over the format on the committee that would allow committee attorneys to question him as opposed to just committee members, as we saw on the Senate side today. Chairman Jerry Nadler has threatened to subpoena Barr and possibly pursue him through the judicial system. We'll have more on this as details warrant. As for today's hearing on the Senate side, if Barr's letter preemptively summarizing the Mueller report and his press conference the day the report was released infuriated Democrats who accused Barr of working as the president's lawyer and not the nation's, well, today's hearing did nothing to reverse those concerns. At one point, Barr was asked why Robert Mueller made no decision on obstruction. Mueller wrote he could not because guidelines wouldn't allow for a president to be prosecuted. So to Barr, that means part of the investigation should not have happened. I'm not really sure of, of his reasoning. I, I really could not recapitulate his analysis, which is one of the reasons in my March 24th letter, I simply stated the fact that he did not reach a conclusion and didn't, didn't try to put words in his mouth. Um, I think that if he felt that he shouldn't go down the path of making a traditional uh, prosecutive decision, then he shouldn't have investigated. Barr took a rather slippery approach all day long, including this example. The attorney general was asked about President Trump's effort to have Robert Mueller fired. Barr seemed to split hairs in his response. The New York Times story said flat out that the president directed the firing of Mueller. He told McGahn, fire Mueller. Now, that, there's something very different between firing a special counsel outright, which suggests ending the investigation, and having a special counsel removed for conflict, which suggests that you're going to have another special counsel. Firing versus removed from conflict. Later, Barr was asked about his comments that the president cooperated fully with the Mueller investigation, specifically that Trump's aides approached Michael Cohen and Paul Manafort, telling them they would be, quote, taken care of if they refused to play ball with investigators and prosecutors. Barr's response? You said that the president was fully cooperating. Is there a conflict there? Yes or no? No. Okay. Do you think it's fully cooperating to instruct a former aide to tell the attorney general to unrecuse himself, shut down the investigation, and declare the president did nothing wrong? Uh, I don't think, uh, well, obviously, since I didn't find it, it was obstruction, I felt that it, the evidence could not support an obstruction. I'm asking if that's fully cooperating. Yeah. I'm not asking you if that's obstruction. Is that fully cooperating? Yeah, he fully cooperated. So by instructing a former aide to tell the attorney general to unrecuse himself, shut down the investigation, and declare the president did nothing wrong, that's fully cooperating? Where is that in the report? 
Vermont Democrat Pat Leahy asking the questions there, and the hearing and bar kept on like that all day. Here, presidential candidate Kamala Harris asked Barr a relatively straightforward question. Did anyone at the White House ask Barr to open an investigation on anyone? Barr's answer was decidedly not straightforward. Has the president or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. Um, the president or anybody else. Seems you'd remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grapple with the word suggest. I mean, uh, there have been discussions of, of matters out there that uh, they have not asked me to open an investigation, but... Perhaps they've suggested? I don't know. I wouldn't say suggest. Hinted? I, I don't know. Inferred? You don't know. No. Okay. Our final clip, responding to Republican Marsha Blackburn, Barr tried to paint Donald Trump as the real victim of the Mueller probe. You know, how did we get to the point here where the evidence is now that the president was falsely accused of colluding with the Russians and accused of being treasonous and accused of being a Russian agent, and the evidence now is that was without a basis, and two years of his administration uh, have been dominated by the allegations that have now been proven false. Somehow Rich's answer very clear on that last one. If anyone went into the hearings today holding out a shred that there was an objective attorney general, that's gone. You would think so. You, you would think so. And you would think you almost have to hear now from Robert Mueller. You almost have to hear from Don McGahn and other people who are called in. Simply to see if Barr is, is you know, being on the level with the responses that he was giving today. We know he was obfuscating, but was he being untruthful? And Nadler, we understand, is concerning a contempt citations here as it relates to Barr. But we, the people, have a right. We have a right to expect that we have a co-equal branch in the justice, the third branch here in the judicial branch, that they're going to call balls and strikes. And the idea, after the convictions, after the indictments, after everything that happened out of this investigation, people going to jail that the attorney general would at least acknowledge the significant, if not malfeasance, abuse of power that went on, and that it wasn't healthy. And if you closed your eyes or disappeared for two years and just reappeared today, you'd swear the president was the victim out of all of this. It, it was infuriating. And, and in addition to both sides holding fast and playing to their teams, the whole point of the Mueller investigation was clarity. Uh, an objective person calling balls and strikes to tell us what happened, what didn't happen. And and ever since the report came out, a lack of clarity all the way through, even to the point where Mueller called Barr on it, and we got more lack of transparency from Barr today. We need to hear from Mueller. Yes, we do. And, Andrew, thank you. Now, one of the senators who questioned Barr, he joins us now. Senator Richard Blumenthal, a Democrat for Connecticut. Senator. You know, Senator, like many... Um, when we go back to the confirmation hearings for William Barr, I thought, especially compared to Matt Whitaker, we hopefully were going to get an impartial head of the Justice Department. Uh, and I got to say, after what I heard today, he certainly sounded much more as a personal attorney for the president than an impartial observer. Is it fair to say that he purposely misled not only your committee, but the American public, in his take on the report and now what we've learned from both the Post and the Times in terms of the concerns that Bob Mueller articulated. Uh, William Barr seems to be acting more as the president's lawyer than the people's lawyer. And that's why I voted against him, because I feared exactly what's happened. And he has portrayed the Mueller report in a way that is deceptive and misleading to say that it clears or exonerates the president. In fact, that's why he was rebuked by Robert Mueller, who said that he has mischaracterized that report in his four-page summary. And then William Barr doubled down in the press conference he did at the time of the report's release. So today he continued that pattern, unfortunately, of warping and distorting the facts and the evidence in that comprehensive and powerful report. It's an indictment in all but name. And uh, strikingly, Barr said that he couldn't recall whether he's had contact with the White House 
on the 14 ongoing investigations. So we need to hear from Robert Mueller, and that should be the next step. To that end, if you just listened to William Barr, you would be confident that the president was exonerated, that the president was a cooperative witness, and that the president, um, in effect, was the victim out of all this. For the folks who didn't read the 448 pages because it's there in black and white, can you say definitively none of those things are true? What Robert Mueller says in his report is that he does not exonerate the president. In fact, if he had facts or conclusion to exonerate the president, he would present them. And he doesn't. That's what he says. And that is repeated at a couple of points in his report. The report is a devastating and chilling portrait of wrongdoing at the highest levels of government and criminality. Substantial evidence is found on at least four separate episodes of obstruction of justice, where there is criminal intent, a connection to an ongoing proceeding, and obstructive action. Those elements fit the crime, and that's why, in my view, President Trump would be under indictment now, but for an Office of Legal Counsel opinion that says a sitting president cannot be indicted. Final question, Senator. Um, listen, I'll, I'll say this. You kind of expect to see certain things from a Ted Cruz, et cetera. But for many people, they watch these hearings, and it's like shirts and skins. A Lindsey Graham, he's a former JAG, a judge advocate general. Uh, he's a person who said on the campaign trail that Trump was unfit for office. He knows better, but he was more focused today as the chair of this committee on spying that was done on the president, uh, theoretically, uh, by the Justice Department, than he was about the findings of the report. How surreal have we gotten here where we can't even talk about an enemy power interfering with our election and obviously the open question as to whether or not there was real obstruction in this investigation? I'm hopeful that we can come together on a bipartisan basis to stop the ongoing Russian attacks on our elections the uh, continuing pattern of disinformation and misuse of cyber and social media to attack our election system, attempts to hack into the election machinery. We need to come together on a bipartisan basis and recognize that in the last election, the Trump campaign happily accepted and welcomed help from the Russians, knowing that some of that help was actually stolen emails and that there may have been illegal conduct that led to it. So we need to come together to make the Russians understand they'll pay a price. They need to pay a price if they continue this attack. Senator Blumenthal, thank you so much for the time. Thank you. All right, on the other side of the break, a former federal prosecutor weighs in on William Barr's testimony and also Bob Mueller's letter to Barr that's causing so much controversy.